Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lolly, and basically I am obsessed with pink and girly clothing and also saving money. So I thought today, seeing as we were all basically spending our lives in our pajamas, I think it would be good for me and my mental well-being to actually put my clothes on. So I thought why not put all of them on. So this is just going to be a little kind of try on my wardrobe, get back into the swing of things of actually wearing real clothes and also sharing some of my top tips on how to save some money and how to look good for less and in the words of Amber Shaw, broke bitch style. <laughs> I just want to clarify, I have a rule with clothing that I try not to spend any more on any particular item than I earn in an hour. Obviously I do sometimes go over this, but it is completely dependent on the item itself, how much it's actually worth, how much we're saving I'm getting, and how much I absolutely love it. So I would probably say 90 to 95% of my wardrobe is either a discounted price or I've massively had it knocked down, or it's second hand or recycled, or something along those lines. So I'm actually going to start with the um, outfit that I'm wearing. So this is actually an Osho dressing gown. It's this absolutely gorgeous dusty pink velvet dressing gown and it's actually surprisingly warm. This retails for about £55 I believe and I paid £6 for it and I'm going to explain in a little bit how I got it for that price but yeah this is generally the kind of retail value versus price I pay. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this is outfit number one. This is actually a really cute little dress from Topshop. And I'm just wearing these absolutely adorable little sparkly flip-flops. These are actually from Primark. So my top tip associated with this particular outfit is sale bargain bins in high street shops. Now, what is a very common thing that high street retailers will do is they will either put the clearance section at the very, very front or the very, very back. And this is for the same two reasons, to lure you into the shop. What often happens is when they have a huge sale, they'll put it at the front of the store to gain the most attraction into the store. But sometimes, if it's just like a general, these are the bits that we're trying to get rid of, they'll put it at the very back of the store. And the reason behind this, you have to walk through all the full price items to get to the sale bit. Honestly, put your blinkers on, just carry on all the way to the back and have a little look there first. Also, things go on sale a lot quicker than people might think. Everybody seems to have it in their head that summer clothes are only on sale in winter, that's not necessarily true. You might notice that in February, March, summer clothing starts to come about, and that is because they want people to pre-purchase in advance in preparation for the season. Therefore, if you purchase it during the actual season, you tend to find there's a lot more sale items because they're trying to get rid of the stock before the new season of clothing comes in. Evidently, this tip is not perfect for every store because not every store does do sales like that and sometimes the item, if it's nice, it'll go and there won't be any left for the sale. But just keep your eyes peeled. If you absolutely love an item, of course, buy it. But if you're sort of thinking, mm, it's nice, but I can live without it, maybe wait to go see if it goes down. So outfit number two. Now this, I know it isn't pink and white, but I just love it so much especially the skirt, it is just the absolute best for twirling and I really could not resist. So my second tip is obviously charity shop. Now everybody knows this is the cheapest place to buy clothes in general shopping conditions. However, I have a couple of extra tips for you on how to get the best out of charity shops. There are three things you need to bear in mind when you're going charity shopping. One, where is the store? Two, what is the store? And three, who is working in the store? What I mean by where is the store is think about where the store is located. If it is in an area where you have particularly elderly living nearby, you're going to get a little bit more granny clothes because those are going to be the locals that are going to be donating the clothing. If you want to increase your chance of finding designer goods in a charity shop, 
and it does happen, go to charity shops in more affluent areas. For example, near where I live, there is an area called West Bridgeford. This is known for being where the footballers live and the wags and the yummy mummies. And therefore, the charity shops often get a little bit nicer donations than, say, the ones in Chad. Two, think about what kind of charity shop it is and how big it is. Unfortunately, most people just donate to the larger brands that they know. For example, British Heart Foundation. They're going to get a lot more donations because they're simply a larger charity. The bigger ones, you're going to get better stuff in, not because people donate nicer stuff, just because they get more donations and they can be a little bit pickier with what product they put out on the shelves. Which also brings me on to, look who's working in the store. Those volunteers are going to be the ones going through and picking what goes out on the shelves. Therefore, if you go into a shop with somebody with a very similar sense of style to yourself working in there, you're more likely to find items that are your style because that person's going to see them and they're going to be like, oh, they're nice, and put them out. So I've just had this really lovely, super cozy, but not too thick, uh, turtleneck, this little cute skirt, my pink trench coat, and some white pants. Next thing I'm going to talk about is upcycling shops. Not everywhere has these, so just take this with a bit of a pinch of salt. The concept of these shops is that you drop off your clothing, they go through it, they pick out what they want, they make an account for you, and when the item sells, you get a percentage of that. The particular one near where I live, I believe it gives you it's either 20 or 25% of the sale price in cash, or 35% in store credit. Honestly, have a little look out for these. They don't often tend to be in high streets or big shopping centers because I can't tell you a single chain that produced these. Every single one I've ever been into have been independently owned and therefore they're much more likely to be on back streets. So have a little look down maybe the more independent shopping areas in your city and see if you can spot one. Okay, so this is the next outfit. So I've had some white jeans with a big oversized, well, it's not super oversized, with a baggy knit, uh, this adorable little bag, and the little cute pink sandals. Next thing I want to talk about is white rose. So this is something that is specific to the area that I live in, but I would be lying if I didn't say that this plays a huge part in how I save most of my money. White rose is kind of a project that's been set up by students in the Nottingham area and basically it's their charity shops. There's are six of them but rather than just being any old thing they take all of the donations and they specifically only pick out the absolute best clothing. Don't quote me on this but I'm pretty certain it's fashion on textile students that are kind of behind it. When you go in it does not feel like a charity shop as well it is absolutely gorgeous you've got all these like beautiful wooden flooring and the changing room is a little cute beach hut and they also sell jewelry from local makers at like a discount i can only assume the premise behind this idea is that people don't like shopping in charity shops some people are a little bit snobby about it they don't want it because it's somebody's old clothes or they have this concept that somebody's died in them which evidently it's not true. When I say these clothes are so cheap, like it is insane. That dressing gown from the start of the video, I got that in white rose and that is the most expensive item I have ever purchased from that store. Actually, part of what I'm wearing right now is from white rose and you're gonna be shocked when I tell you how cheap these items are. The bag and the trousers. I get braced. <laughs> the bag and the trousers together cost me £1.50. One pound and fifty pence. A hundred and fifty pence for both items. I like don't get me wrong, I like cheap items, but even for me I was like, whoa, that is very cheap. Most of the white rose shops, they have like their normal stuff and then they have the pound section. And this is the stuff that evidently hasn't sold for a little bit and they literally just shove it in a box and they're like go forth. The particular White Rose um, boutique that I like to go to has a whole floor for this. It is literally a floor of pound clothing. It's not like you could have to buy it, it's kind of potluck, they have changing rooms. They even have a returns policy which is insane for items that cheap. 
and second hand like if you live in the area around like Nottingham honestly don't go in these places because I want all the good stuff for myself okay so I know this one is a lot more OTT than the last outfit but it kind of links back to the next tip so this absolutely stunning fishtail dress this is actually from Quiz now I know a lot of people wouldn't have a reason to buy a dress like this for the exception of prom I am a pageant girl I'm heavily involved with Miss England so therefore I need dresses like this but dresses like this can cost an absolute bomb I actually paid less than £50 for this dress and that was brand new and that leads me on to my next tip work perks a lot of companies have perk schemes for their employees a lot of companies are signed up with things such as Perkbox which is a I guess a third party company. Your employer pays so much a year towards this to give the staff perks. For example, when I worked at Specsavers, I got like 40% off jewelers. And not very many of them are actually advertised to the staff. So go and ask your employer, are there any work perks or perk schemes that I'm actually entitled to? But there are many, many options to save money on clothing, jewellery, holidays. I even got entitled to free phone insurance. So honestly, check out your work perks. You'd be amazed what you can save. Also, don't forget to ask about student discounts, NHS, services. If you work or you're eligible for those discounts, don't be afraid to ask for them. Because the worst they're going to do is go, no, sorry, we don't offer that service in this particular store. So this is my next outfit, um, this isn't actually my favourite if I'm really honest, I feel quite exposed up here and ideally I'd like a little jacket, but you know that none of your cardigans go and even your boyfriend goes, that's are in pink. I've got this cute little pink skirt, white cami, little black and white bag and my little sandals again just decided to put my hair up. I've also got my Fitbit and the reason I've kind of gone for this outfit for this tip is because it's about fixing things up. So the absolute cheapest items out there in normal retailers are going to be the stuff that's broken. I would be very choosy about which broken items you buy. Not all of them can be fixed. I chose this outfit to demonstrate that because this skirt it's not only too big for me, but it's got damage to the zipper. When I get around to it, we'll fix the zipper properly. I've managed to get it up and then I pinned it. But yeah, that was how I managed to get into this cute little pink skirt for literally next to nothing. And to be honest, for now, I'm actually quite happy just having it pinned there because half the time, like, my bag will be there or I've got a jacket on and my arms are there. So I'm actually really not that bothered. Literally, it doesn't take long to learn how to fix a zip or replace a button or stitch a hole back together. The other thing I wanted to show was my Fitbit. So I was very, very kindly given this by my boyfriend. However, the strap, one was kind of ugly, but it was also broken, like it was tearing. So I went and got a new strap. I looked on Amazon and I checked the reviews and I got this for eight pounds. So I turned a watch to mean something that I really wasn't interested in and kind of a bit faulty to being really, really cute. Also, this bag again was another white rose find. Uh, and yeah, this again was, I think this was about two or three pounds. I didn't buy this in the pound section. It does have a mark on the back, but don't care, it's against me. Okay, so this is the next outfit. So this skirt is by far one of the, just the best items in my wardrobe. And then this bodysuit, these are both from New Look again on sale, following my rules. <laughs> the shoes are from Primark, again, clearance. So my top tip with this particular outfit is swapping and hand-me-downs. The one thing I did want to put in was this particular necklace. Now this actually belongs to my great-grandmother and it is the only thing of hers that I still have. Um, I received a bunch of jewellery. I don't think it was particularly worth anything because we did take her on antiques for a show. <laughs> Well, I think we took it on Antiques Roadshow, unless I completely made that memory up, but I'm certain we did take it on Antiques Roadshow because I ended up being caught on Blue Peter, because we were there. We definitely took a sewing machine. I think we took the jewellery. Anyway, so this necklace is obviously a hand-me-down and a very, very sentimental one to me as well. I don't think it goes perfectly with the outfit, there's quite a lot going on, but I just wanted to 
a quite a classical Regency style outfit. I feel a little bit like Princess Anastasia right now. My other tip for hand-me-downs and swaps is if you're having a bit of a clear out, why don't you suggest to your friend that they have a clear out at the same time if you've both been talking about it before you get rid of your clothes. See, is there anything that your friend doesn't want that actually you really like? You never know. Okay, so this is my next outfit. So I've got a little cute t-shirt, my oldest cardigan. I've had this since I was about 16 years old. Again, I think I paid like a pound for it from Primark. It's got this hell of a pull on the back. And because I've got such long hair, nobody's ever noticed it. Little pink from a 21 tennis skirt. Again, my beloved little white rose bag and some strappy diamante knee lip heels. So these again were from White Rose and you guessed it, a pound. For me, the main thing in this outfit that relates to the tip is the skirt. This skirt I actually got from Depop. Depop is a great way of finding good stuff for a cheap price. And the good thing about Depop is you can haggle. A lot of people are surprised when I say, I don't like haggling. I am British, I find it really uncomfortable. You catch a lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. So somebody says, no, don't push it. And certainly don't be rude about it. Okay, so this is the last outfit. And I'm actually gonna do two tips with this one. So my first tip with this outfit is what I would call end of line shops. End of line shops are those kind of retailers they don't have their own brand of clothing, but what they do is they take old stock from other brands and they sell it off. The biggest example of these kind of shops are of course places like TK Maxx or in America, TJ Maxx. Another example of end of line retailers is places like everything5pounds.com. These kind of shops, what they're doing is they're taking the stock that hasn't sold or is in excess from other brands and they sell them on cheaper and this is why the prices are so much lower. If you really don't want to compromise on quality or if it's second hand, this is a great option as long as you can be bothered to go through the rails. I actually got this outfit from TK Maxx, uh, it was £10 for the full cord. This top did not look like this though, when I got it I have like made it into more of a crop top. Which brings me on to my next tip. Don't be afraid to DIY. There are many, many videos out there that show you how to make your own clothes, how to customize clothes that you already have, and how to copy more expensive clothes for a much cheaper price. I've realized this whole video, my legs are a lot paler than my top bit. It's all been tanned at the same time, but this just seems to go so much quicker than up here. So if you did find any of this information helpful or if you just generally enjoyed watching the video, please give me a little like, that would be in the absolute world to me. If you're feeling super lovely, please give me a subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye!